Last week, we focused on how to get slim by spring, but there's one piece to the puzzle we haven't covered yet, food. Today, we begin a five-day series on the importance of better eating. I am joined by personal trainer Ali McWilliams at Metcalf's Market at Hilldale. How important is food in weight loss? Oh, it's the biggest component. It's about 80%. So if you want to feel good and look great, 80% of it is what you put in your mouth. So the big question is, if I want to be slim by spring, you don't have that much time. What are the, the biggest things you need to stay away from to be successful? Uh, processed food. So that means anything in these aisles here, anything that comes out of a box fast food and alcohol. So looking at this aisle, wheat thins is one that I know a lot of people think is a healthier cracker. Right, so they, they get you by saying 100% whole grain or reduced fat, but if you really start to look at ingredients in the list, um, you know, all of a sudden, the first couple items are your most important items, and all of a sudden there's vegetable oils, and there's way other fats in there, and way too many calories for what you're eating. And if we move kind of down the aisle, I know that Triscuits are one of my yes, favorites, your favorite. but this is one that a lot of people are going to look at because it says 90 calories. Yes, that always gets people. So everyone's focusing on the calories instead of, a calorie's not a calorie, so really focusing on quality food instead of, you know, there's a million ingredients and here. And again, if you look at that ingredient list, that should be a red flag for you. Totally. If there's more than five ingredients, you shouldn't eat it. And if you can't pronounce it or don't know what the word is, then you probably shouldn't be eating it so either. So stay out of the middle section of the store. Correct. So the best way to lose weight is to do what you call clean eating. Yes. What is that? It is eating lean meats, fruits and vegetables, and dairy, grass-fed dairy. So let's look at some of the examples of meat, because this is one that people struggle with, you know, eating red meat and still being able to be healthy. Right, like Jordan Dahl, local farmer, grass-fed beef is way better for you than even organic. So when you fry it up, there'll be no fat. Awesome. Another one of your favorites? There's also some great pork chops that are great for you, nice and lean. Tastes fantastic. You'll notice a huge difference with grass-fed. So this is an entire freezer full of things you can pick from. Correct. And one of the most important aspects of clean eating is produce, fruits and veggies. Definitely. So try something new, whether it's an apple, pear that you haven't had before, a different type of orange, grapefruit, anything that you will eat or you haven't tried before, try. Fruit is fantastic for you. So how much fruit and veggies should we be eating? How much of our meal should that be comprised of? Uh, five servings is great, really. It's unlimited. You don't you do not have to count your calories for fruits and vegetables. And you get full off of them? You totally do, especially when you combine it with a protein. Okay, so for somebody out there who's thinking, I want to be slim by spring, when you're talking about food, what is the, the most important thing for them to keep in mind in order to be successful? Cut out your alcohol and start eating fruits and vegetables and lean meats and proteins. Good luck, right? That's right. Everybody can do it. You have to start Everybody somewhere. Everybody can, one day at a time. Allie, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And if you would like more information on clean eating, you can reach Allie by going to our web channel, NBC15.com, and clicking on news links. Tomorrow, as we continue our week focused on better eating, a look at healthy cookbooks and great web resources for you families on the go. David has a final look at the forecast after this.